I have to talk about 30 teams in one video, so to save time and because I'm lazy, I'm not going to bother with an intro. If you didn't read the title, this video is about the most underrated players on each NBA team. Also, some of the stats will be per 36 stats because their team does not give them as many minutes as they should. So, starting with the Atlanta Hawks, my pick here would be Dwayne Dedman. Dwayne is an awesome defender, he blocks shots, rebounds, and he's great in the pick and roll. For the Celtics, I'd go with Marcus Morris, who they just got in the Avery Bradley trade. Morris is a combo forward who can switch on defense and he is pretty much unguardable for mid-range. For the Nets, KJ McDaniels. KJ is a super athletic wing who is a great defender. His three-point shot is not good, but he's a hustle and defensive player. For the Hornets, Dwight Howard. I found out how underrated Dwight was in my last video. Apparently Dwight statistically was just as good as Andre Drummond and DeAndre Jordan. He's still a star. For the Bulls, it's Paul Zipser. Paul is a 3 and D wing who was drafted in the second round last season. He is a classic jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none player. For the Cavs, it's Eddie Tavares. In the 13 games that he's played in his career, he averaged 4.3 blocks and 15 rebounds in his per 36. So, he's a great rim protector. For the Mavs, Nerlens Noel, who's a great switchy defensive center that averages a double-double in his per 36. For the Nuggets, Darrell Arthur is a stretch four who shot 45% from three on three attempts per game this season. For the Pistons, Ish Smith, who has played on 12 teams in his six seasons in the NBA, but he seems to have found his place on the Pistons. He is a great playmaker, averaging 7.7 .7 assists in his per 36. For the Warriors, JaVale McGee. McGee has revitalized his career on the Warriors, and it's pretty obvious that he's better than Zaza Pachulia, and he should be starting. In his per 36, JaVale averages 23, 12, and 3.3 blocks. He fits into the system, and he again should be starting. For the Rockets, Luke Mba Amute is a great perimeter defender, and he finally shot the three ball well this season, shooting 39% from three. For the Pacers, Victor Oladipo has been put into bad situations year after year in his career. Being benched, played at the wrong position, playing behind Westbrook. But now in Indiana, he's going to be the second scoring option, he will be in the situation that he's needed to be for a long time, and he's a huge most improved player candidate this season. For the Clippers, Austin Rivers, who gets way too much shit for no reason. Austin is a really good defender, and he's solid offensively, but for whatever reason, people seem to think he sucks, but he doesn't. For the Lakers, Jordan Clarkson is going to have a similar career to Jamal Crawford, as I could see him winning three or more Six Man of the Year awards in his career. For the Grizzlies, Troy Daniels is a very good shooter, shooting 39% from three on 5.3 attempts per game. For the Heat, Goran Dragic is one of the better point guards in the league, and he does not get an inch of credit for it. For the Bucks. Tony Snell is a great 3 and D player, of course he was garbage until he left the Bulls, but I'm totally not salty. For the Timberwolves, Gorgie Jiang is a really good combo big man. He's a great mid-range shooter and he has started to show the ability to stretch it out to the 3 point line. For the Pelicans, I'm going to go with both Etwan Moore and Dante Cunningham. I'm going with both of these guys because so many people talk shit about the Pelicans wings and how bad they are at shooting. Even though Dante Cunningham shot 39% from three and Moore shot 37% from three last season. For the Knicks, Willie Hernan Gomez is a great post scorer and rebounder, and he damn well better be starting next season. For the Thunder, Jeremy Grant is a great defender and athlete, and he's improved a whole lot as a shooter this season, shooting 38% from three. For the Magic, Alfred Payton is a great defender, passer, and scorer at the rim, but because he can't shoot, people think he's trash when he's not. For the Sixers, Rashawn Holmes is a combo big man. He's a great defender, athlete, 
and he's also a capable shooter from mid and from three. For the Suns, Allen Williams is a really good rebounding big, and he's also a defensive plus. For the Blazers, Mo Harkless is a great defender who is a versatile combo forward on offense. For the Kings, Garrett Temple is a great role player at the two. For the Spurs, David Bertans is a great three-point shooter at the four as he shot 40% from three in his rookie season. For the Raptors, Piscal Siakam is a good defender and his offensive game has improved as the season has progressed. For the Jazz, Rodney Hood, who is a really good scorer and shooter. With him being the main offensive option this upcoming season, I expect him to average 18 to 20 points per game. And finally, for the Washington Wizards, Chris McCullough gets no minutes at all when he really should. He has the tools and the skill set to be successful, and he's just never given the opportunity. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro music. That's it, friend.